Hey y'all, I thought I'd just come and be snowed in with you. Can you see all of that in the background there? <laughs> Happy snow day for some of you. So I'm going to uh, go on and do our little invitations here and let down the light. And just keep on inviting our sisters into the space. So what are you all doing since it's snowing? Are you getting some extra sleep? Uh, do you think that this is an accident? <laughs> uh, do you think it's an accident that we are we're being slowed down a bit, even more? Oh, look at the! Can you see the kids back um, playing, um, rolling around like? My husband actually wants to get out in it. Can you see the, the babies playing? Let me turn the camera around because I want you to see the babies playing. See them out there playing? How about that? It's not snowing in Detroit, <laughs> but it's snowing here. It's just a beautiful sight, actually. So, um, but you know, it's beautiful when you're able to to stay home and do some things. <laughs> versus if you got caught out in it, or you you have a job that you have to go to. So I'm gonna go on and get in position here to get to go live without turning you off. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody, Lottie Dottie and everybody, we likes to party. Hey, hey, we likes to party. <laughs> okay, come on. Uh, yes, and we've been doing some powerful work in, in the Juicy U, and let me just open by saying that Monique Taylor said that she was calling forth a snowstorm for special juicy purposes. So yes, I had to tell you that's how juicy we are really. <laughs> we have the power to summon the weather, honey. So thanks to Miss Monique who put that Mrs. Monique Taylor who put that out there and made that thing come on true. True and through. <laughs> you did that, Monique, honey. Okay, so today we are going to uh, jump right into some things, some lessons that I plan to share with you very transparently um, that involve love, sex, money, business, mothering, parenting, <laughs> and um, I, I, I think it's really a great opportunity because in She Magic this, this uh, month, we're, going, we're talking about legacy. We are talking about our legacies, and um, of course, we're dealing with She Magic Money tomorrow. Um, usually, we have it on the third Thursday of every month, but next, next tomorrow, um, we're going to have a special guest who is from amongst our tribe right here, um, who's going to be uh, featured tomorrow. So, legacy is very important, particularly for those of you who are participating in the cryptocurrency, the boot camp. Uh, the the gold Bitcoin bootcamp is now open and some of you are looking at some of the legacies that you're leaving and we have a way you know to do that but for me the work begins with um, in our mind our spirit and our relationship to our money the relationship that we have to um, our our sensuality our sexuality and our femininity so i just want to can i share can, do i have permission to all of you all who have said hello that you're here to share transparently with you i want to share some beautiful lessons um that i have been tell me where you are because this is going to connect for some of you on the retrograde 
um, because we are in a Mercury retrograde right now. And if you know anything about anything, that's nothing to be afraid of or concerned about or any of that. Um, and uh, what happens is a lot of times we trade our, our spirituality uh, from being very religious and fear-based. We have a fear-based relationship oftentimes with God. So we have a fear-based relationship with ourselves and with any of the cosmic occurrences. You could go into any tradition. You could go out of Christianity into Islam. You could go out of Islam into Christianity. You can go out of Christianity into African traditionalism. You could go out of one thing into another. But if you never change your mind, you'll always have a fear-based relationship with whatever is happening in your life and on the planet. And so um, I wanted to build on that just with talking about this whole, because we're in the good girls gone goddess tribe. And I believe that it's a special kind of woman just like me who followed the rules, who, who did well for herself, who is an achiever, who really... Um, has a, a standard for herself uh, in how she shows up in the world. That applies to many of you in some way. And so, I, you know, do I have permission again to just to share? And then we'll see how it connects with the Mercury retrograde grade because I'm going to share with you what this the message this particular ret retrograde is, is bringing since it's the first one. And, um, the, and uh, my, my advanced astrology consultants say that uh, the rest of the year is going to start moving very fast. So this is a time to take advantage of reflecting, reevaluating, and resetting how things are going to flow. So I found myself there. But let me tell you this, and, and some of you all may be able to come in and share, particularly if you're mothers of boys. Um, so I want to I backtrack for you a little bit. So I, first of all, have been feeling something with this particular retrograde, perhaps. I don't know. But I have been more quiet. I haven't posted in almost three or four days on Facebook, and I was good with that because um, I don't ever want to get into a rhythm in my business where I'm just going through the motions just to post. I don't do that personally. So why would I do that just to post in business? Even though they say you should always post something um, when you start talking about social media metrics and that type of thing. So even for those of you who think you want to be an entrepreneur, it's very easy to become a slave or an employee. Really, there's a difference between being an entrepreneur and being and working for yourself. You know, because if you still have an employee mindset, you will take the habits as well into how you do business. And, you know, I know that I probably have been one of the first black women talking about the feminine business model before you start putting terms out here and people start you know, look at hearing you use these terms, but they don't know the process that it took for you to get to that. So I've been talking about the feminine business model. So there have been times where I have been like last week, because anybody who's in my groups, you know, or, or when I say groups in my process, in my programs, you know how much I give the attention to detail. And sometimes I am channeling information. I wasn't always comfortable with that, you know, at least saying it publicly. And so, um, so last week I started to feel the, the drain, like I needed a vacation. I know what pleasure feels like to me. And being in the United States, it's very easy when you would rather be in the mountains, on the beach, you know, in your mind, right? Even though I'm, I'm constantly telling myself, be here now, right? This is where you're supposed to be now. I've gotten all the confirmations and the messages. When I find myself assimilating with some of the grid that none of you, some of you have not gotten off the grid. Some of you have never, if, if you have gotten off of the grid, particularly if you're an expat, and I, there are some expats in, in this group who left the United States. If you've lived abroad, you understand right now it's just a concept. And most people who think about living abroad really think about escaping. And so 
um, in some ways you're not you you can't escape yourself right you can't escape anything that you're running from but if you're called to something it could be a, an opportunity to slow down so people who work nine to five jobs who are always uh, on a, a automatic program don't oftentimes recognize that it becomes a normal and this is why I want to talk about womaning up because I, there were some situations where, you know, I, I had a to-do list, I have a plan, and life happened. My, you know, I got, I, I got ill a couple of weeks ago unexpectedly, and it totally threw off my entire schedule. And so um, I, was, I was bummed out about that and, and had to catch up, literally catch up. It was a good thing to have because when you have people... You know who whenever the energy is moving um you you want to move with the energy but there are some objectives that i set for myself and i was really tripping out about not meeting those objectives because my body got sick and my mother always says something to me she said she said baby she used to say this to me before i was uh, was married again you know she would say baby you the head of your household so you got to take care of you and so she would always be concerned when I when I when I would be working, 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 or she would call, or she could hear it in my voice that I was working, working, working. And it's very easy for me to do because of my sign, um, all of the energies that I have, uh, the planets that I have in Taurus. Um, all I have some Pluto um, in in Virgo, which is uh, is can be work workaholic. So this is very important. So I'm like. I was telling my husband, even when I was an employee, I'm the kind of employee that you give me what needs to be done and then leave me alone because I'm going to get it done because I have a high level of risk of responsibility. Um, and some of you can relate to this. And that's what I do mean by being a good girl, a good girl. You have this high level of responsibility, taking care of yourself, taking care of things, keeping your word. But some, whether it comes from trying to be good and that people please, you know, that's not what we're going into. Hey, love, right now, today. But one of the pros of that is a high level of responsibility. So even when I'm working for myself, sometimes... I can be hard on me. I can kick my own behind, right? And so I was just tired. I was tired. I needed to rest on a few days. And so I knew I had an arduous schedule. And and not in a bad way. It was a, it's, it's a good way because energy definitely is moving. Got a chance to participate in some spiritual ceremony. But then there was like one day where everything was compact. And I even had one of these motherhood lessons, right? So we were disciplining the baby and he was, he has been like off of the chain at different times, right? And when I say off, I mean really off, just like you tell him something, it goes in one ear out of the other. You find yourself repeating the same thing over and over again. And um, this particular morning, he lied to me. He lied to me first, then he lied to his dad. And so we, you know, we really try to get them to think before they, when they, before they do something. And of course, after they do, do something, even if we're giving them discipline. So, um, it was time to discipline him, which we said, you're going to, you, you're going to get disciplined by both of us in one way or another. We, you know, so we confer on it and it was time to discipline him. And he's so dramatic and I'm like, and at a certain and during the this whole exchange you know and then my husband was like no don't leave the room stay right here like, you know I'm like, okay so so in this exchange i'm like i had a premonition i saw something that concerned me it moved me very deeply and um I felt myself getting emotional, okay? So I had to leave the room and just get myself together because of the, the premonition that I saw based on how he listens, based on how he processed things, I saw something. So I had to get myself together and then we communicated about it as a family. But that, it hit me in my heart. Have you all been there before, like as a mother? Like you, when you're parenting, particularly a boy, uh, 
with, with a strong energy. Come on, y'all. Talk back to me about this boy energy. Talk to your girl. <laughs> um, I come from a family of mostly women on my mother's side and quite opposite on my, well, all of the men, most of the men had girls even on my dad's side. So I just come from a family of a lot of women. I'm a real girly girl. And, you know, girls, we, we listen different. I was not that girl that needed to buck authority. I was not that girl that needed to, but I was mouthy. You know, I hear that, that that's the other thing that does come with girls um, sometimes. So I get that. So y'all talk back to me with these boys, right? I really understand why why men, little boys, need to see men how they how they stand up and pee, how they sit down, how they put their pants on. They need to see it, if nothing else, because women can teach boys how to be women or what they what their idea of a man is emotionally. Because we're talking about emotional intelligence today. Well, my husband comes from a family of very, you know, robust men. Like, it's tons of them. So, even his mother, who raised five boys, basically, she don't play, you know. And so, another mother had told me, she said, baby, let me tell you something. She said, you're going to have to toughen up when it comes to these boys. And I, I knew what she meant, right? She was like, you know, sometimes you're going to have to get in their face. And even even I have a story of co-parenting with their mother. So we, I can tell you about the ritual magic and how much it works. Because we, before we got to this point, it, it, it could have looked like it wasn't going to happen. But I'm telling you. Um, women, if you are in a relationship with, with, with the man and you keeping him from seeing his children, holla at your girl because you probably are wrong. You probably are using your child as a, as a tool unless, if, you know, unless your child is in danger. And if you are tripping out with the woman that he's with or there is there can be a way around that. There is hope. There is, there is, there is community there. And so my point is, she even said to me, look, we're doing this together. You have my full support um, on get you know, the discipline. So I basically had to leave out of the room. So fast forward the tape. We also been having a challenge with this damn dog. This with I'm talking about womaning up. I'm going somewhere, y'all, with this. Y'all talk back to me if you raise boys or you even had those kinds of lessons with your girls. So we got this this dog rescued a dog. Now I have trained four at least four dogs, three for sure, all the way from the beginning to the end. I I'm pretty darn good with training dogs. I'm a teacher all around, and this dog. She, her nature, she comes from the bulldog breed. Bulldog means exactly what it means. Bullish, stubborn, fixed, um, willful, um, but also loyal. She's a sweet one, but she's destructive. We, and I've never had a dog where you can't leave, you can't enjoy the dog. You know, all of my dogs I have a, a communication and a relationship with. Well, she got away. She ran out into the street. She's a female dog. She ran out into the street all around. This is the third time she's gotten away from us when we were trying to put the leash on and goes crazy. Well, you know, in Prince George's County, you're liable. You, if, if your dog gets out there, you are liable for, for something the dog would do. And if somebody sees this big four-legged running towards them that's afraid of dogs, they, they could panic. And, I, and, and my dog is friendly. It'll run up to you really fast, tail wagging, but if a person doesn't know that. And so I'm like, nah, man, I ain't dealing with this. So I literally got my little files together, got dressed, was getting ready to take this dog back to the rescue. 
but something kept saying well first of all I was processing like I don't like abandoning anything I don't like leaving anybody behind I, that's because that's part of, of, of the issue that I have had to heal feeling rejected and abandoned by my own family so what that how that shows up or showed up for me in womaning up is a lot of times I stay in situations during my healing process that I far too long because I didn't want to ever do to do to anyone what I felt was done to me by people that I love so I'm very loyal sometimes to a default so when when I tell you all the story about the fibroids and my womb and how my womb spoke to me that was the beginning of my healing of false loyalty so I felt that thing come up with this dog and I, and I said, okay, well, let me, my mother had, had been saying like, y'all, y'all gonna have to take that dog back. That dog don't fit. So I know my mother always comes from the place of, she don't, does not want me stressed out any more than what I'm already doing. So I said, okay, something else said, call another elder. And this one happened to be a man. I hope y'all tuning in. I, this is the good part. I really hope that sisters who you didn't grow up with your father, you know, this is why this this subject, I'm telling you real life. We're going to get into the spiritual principles and how you can use them and all of that good stuff. But I'm telling you, this is the good part. When, that, when we got to the elder, I stated exactly what was going on. And I said to, to, to him, everything I tried and he and this is he went right into I'm telling you this is like I could get emotional because it it, it it made me feel like I was talking to my father it's a big deal I don't feel that often and so <clears throat> he said to me he said here's what you do so that's how he started out the conversation here's what you do and um my dad used to start out like that. You tell him, and he would go right into strategy. Everything this man said to me was, I heard, he was giving me instructions on how to handle this dog. But he was speaking, spirit was speaking in my ear about womaning up. And, and, and spirit began to tell, to speak to me about the new season in my own life and how I don't have to carry people anymore in order to woman up. Many of us have an, have an attitude. I'm going to tell you what he said and how this blessed me and how it could bless you. And we're going to get into some other principles in a minute. I do want when you come on here to walk away with some real principles. Hey, love. Hey, everybody who's been saying hello. I'm just trying to stay in the pocket right here. Um, I see you. Thank you. Hello. I love you. <laughs> and so um, when, when, like, when I got it, I really got it right inside I got it and so we still have the dog like literally we had our shoes on ready to walk out the door and you know how you all say say damn I ain't know that that was still there right because being good being a good girl so to speak and not even even being in ministry and being in in, in this type of profession there's something that can soften you. You begin to get, get softened. And so, <clears throat> okay, so here's where I want you all to find yourself. There is a womaning up that comes out of survival and survival mode. I know this bill has to be paid. I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to take care of my children. I'm going to do whatever it takes to live on my own. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this grade. Many of you in this tribe come from that train of thought. And, and even if I'm going to do whatever it takes not to get in trouble. Some of you may have still did what you, you did whatever you wanted to do. So even even some of you that's been girlfriends and wives where you've had extramarital affairs, you know that a woman can do things for a longer period of time and quote unquote get away with it before a man can. So I'm t I want you to find out if you're listening, 
you know how the baby said worry about yourself think about where you are don't get too caught on my story but hear the principles and see how it relates to yours because i did not want even though this is a four-legged even though this four-legged is a little seems a little cuckoo a little off you know, when you mix them dogs up, sometimes they their breeds, you mix them together and they their personality is a little different. But see, you got to be about this walk all the time if you're about it. When you start to understand that I create my reality, I'm a co-creator, I am an, in, I'm an energetic being, I'm an alchemical woman. See, that can't just be convenient about looking good and that can't just be convenient when you you want to just be treated a certain way as a woman or catered to or taken care of or no 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 it means when even when life happens right that everything is always speaking to you and providing you with an opportunity to see how your life is communicating with you even this dog because i love my other dog my other dog was pretty much taken from me by my ex and so, um, I know those of you who are pet owners, you understand probably a little bit more. But anyway, it doesn't just apply to that. So my heart really like, so from, from one day to the next, here I am hearing this call to woman up. So here's what the elder said to me. He said, you don't know where you got this dog from. He said, so he, he's, <laughs> y'all, this is the part. This is so good. As I was getting ready to prepare the the files to turn this dog back in, I know we can't turn our children in, right? But my mother even said to that, Ted said to me, she said, baby, she said, when sometimes when you're raising these children, you have to let them go. She said, sometimes mothers have to put their children in institutions because they can't deal with them. So she said, my mama said that to me. She said, so there, you even in being a mama, there's a time when your child goes crazy, gets out there in the world and not showing, you got to let them go. And I said, whoo, okay. But then when I talked to the elder and I had looked at the paperwork, the, one of the things the paperwork said, have a rule of nothing is for free. And I know what, the, what that falls on when you're working with dogs, for instance, you make them earn anything, including your love. Come on now. Come on now. If you don't feel it, I, got, I feel it. <laughs> you, so I'm really loving. I'm really a, a touchy, feely. Mm, come here baby did, 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 you did. like you know even some of y'all y'all you know I'm, I'm i'm running both the business and i'm teaching so you're gonna have you i'm moving you through the entire process as a solopreneur so i'm i'm real all of that and so baby he said here's what you do he said you gonna have to run that dog and that dog can't run you he said, when she get out of line, you're going to have to knock her in her mother head. <laughs> and I was like, and see me, I'm I, like, so, 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 so I'm going to say this with all due respect. I don't know who's watching, but I'm, I come from the school of the dog whisperer. The dog whisperer uses words like energy and I know how to coach and train and train people. And so the dog whisperer talks about how really you when you're working with a dog all you're doing is really training people but and so i got it hi love so good to see you so i got i got him and i worked that with my other dog but this dog requires me to woman up based on his her nature alone Ooh, now, now I know those of you who homeschool or who are very in tune with your children, and I used to teach this out in the community. When I did my work out in the community, I'm a Pritchard trained, certified parenting expert um, on parent education. And one of the things that we teach parents is how to raise your children according to their, um, how they learn. 
And so sometimes we try to have a one size fit all. So I'm going to say this about what I'm about to say. My husband, so I'm going to my husband, I'm processing. And he's indulging me for a while. He's, and I said, what well, the book said, and I did this, and I did that. He said, baby, he said, this is just like everything else. He said, we go to them, meaning of people who don't look like us, who set the standard on how we supposed to be in relationships, how what kind, how we supposed to be in money, how we supposed to, and even including the dogs. He said that dog requires another type of leader. And I said, okay. That clicked when he said that. So when we go to the elder, he's saying the same thing, but he's saying it in his unapologetic elder wisdom way. And he, he was telling me what I was going to have to do. And it was what my husband was already doing that I thought was too hard and too harsh. So we still have the dog. So my lesson and my takeaway, and, and I made the adjustments that day. That's another thing that we do. A lot of times we talk about what we're going to do. We, start, we, we go and say, well, I got to go think about it. Well, I got to go process it. No, no, no. But when you go to an elder, when you go to the wisdom and they give you the way, you do exactly what is prescribed to you. And so I did exactly what he said to do. And first of all was get out of my husband's way of letting him do what he knew to do with the nature of this job this dog i also find that i have to i had to do the same thing when it came to the boys i had to get out of the way because i am i'm a i'm i'm feminine and sweet i'm yin I, i'm a disciplinarian but i'm my bark is much worse than my bite. I don't like hurting anybody. I don't, and if I do, and if I create even any boundaries in my business, a lot of times I'm doing it to protect my energy and, and of course, to be more available. He started to then talk to me about getting out of emotions. And I know that if we talk about pleasure and getting into pleasure, many of us have been resistant to pleasure. So the idea that um, when, when you start getting and leading in your life with pleasure, you expect, really you start to have an expectation of pleasure all the time. But there is another part of our journey, of our process, that sometimes cause, cause, cause us forward to no longer enable not even our own codependency on being one way. And I, in my mind, because I don't like conflict and I don't like to have to tell anybody to do something over and over again. That's just, that, you know, because I open saying how I like to do certain things. No. This everybody had been saying the same thing over time. That's the second thing I want to say to you. Usually there's a common denominator. Other people have been saying it to you, but you couldn't hear them. Or you thought maybe there was another answer. And then I went into this space of feeling like I was weak in some way. Because I looked at areas in my life where I have let, allowed people to get away with, quote unquote, get away with a lot of things in my life, in my business, in my affairs, and I and I and I had to just digest. And he said, and, and he he caught me, you know. He said, "What are you feeling?" And I and I started to tell him what I was feeling. He said, "Oh no, you can't go there." And um, I, I thought about us. Because when it comes to our daughters, a lot of us come from a generation of women who were raised by women that had to survive. They were, there was a certain time period that they were born in. I mean, we were talking after a spiritual ceremony of, um, of just how many secrets there are in black and Latino families right 
the the black and latino or black and brown whatever you want to call it we're not crayons if we started to talk about nationality we would be naming too many of the tribes but whatever tribe you come from we started talking about this generation that started keeping secrets such that you don't know your family's history not not even your medical history your mental health history your financial history as well as your financial legacy the secrets and so a lot of times we're we are navigating life in the blind and so we find ourselves stumbling onto things stumbling through situations because we don't we're not we're we we don't have the answers because the elders didn't speak to us and then so here we come another generation you know last week we talked about generation x and we tend to raise children with a little bit more explanation and so now we've created the Generation Y. The Generation X created the Generation Y. And it's a funny thing that we talk about that they ask why. They want to know why I got to do. Why that? Why? 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 So, it, so now you find yourself explaining a lot or justifying a lot, not necessarily being authentic. And so now we have these millennials. And, the, you know, I told you all last week that the, ch that the babies, the children have been on my heart and after that, before that, and after that, I stay in conversations um, with other people about their children all the way to our children. And um, the, a lot of the millennials do not respect us because of the secrets we've kept, the inauthenticity. And we've been talking a lot in this space about healing your own mother wound healing the places in you that are unmothered or under nurtured because remember they weren't necessarily nurturing many of the the generation that raised us or the generation before that they weren't necessarily nurturing they were either martyring themselves um meaning they died they died with cancer in their body they died with high blood pressure because they sacrificed their health to do everything for you or they taught you how to fish they didn't they didn't to go get the fish for you they taught you how to fish some of you are duplicating what your parents did and that is the part where we also have to look at our daughters because and when I say our daughters you all know I'm talking about the collective because all of us are mothers and all of us have a collective even if you are a young woman in your 30s and you haven't had children yet you, it's time for you now to develop the mindset of the girls who are in who are preteen and teen that those are your little sisters or they're your daughters there is a connection and so when you begin to woman up there is a place beyond the obvious there's a place beyond just survival there is a place be first of all there's a place beyond just being good and then the whatever survival has required for you whatever your coping mechanism has been to survive and actually Cecile said it um, really beautifully in uh, when on last week's live where she was saying I realized that I was stuck in the in the that place that place of the traumatized child some of us are grown women who are stuck in the place of the traumatized child but we're grown and we have responsibilities and now we're lifing and lifing continues to happen and you get pregnant you fall in love whatever the case may be and now you're raising your children based off of however you were raised if you are not the kind of woman that ask questions there's all kinds of women in this space who go along to get along there are all kinds of women who have been compliant and obligated and so we're in relationship with our wonder wonder, wonder wonderhood our womanhood under obligation there's a, so we haven't questioned why do I feel this why am I parenting like this if if anything many of us have become de have defended we defend our mothers because we, nobody made it safe for us to tell the truth about what we feel without feeling like we are being ungrateful and now we defend our parenting understanding that it's on display either way or not 
And so what are we doing to, to our daughters? Because when they start acting out and they don't do, they don't follow the role of being good. My girlfriend said to me the other day, she said her, her daughter did something and she told her, yeah, I did it. I, I regret um, how it went down, but I, I ain't, I'm not sorry. Come on. Cause this is this. See, if you have music that's influencing your children, they'll hear a song like, I ain't sorry. I ain't sorry. I ain't sorry. And if they don't have a woman with wisdom, without with responsibility, with self-awareness, not not teaching them the extreme, but the balance, you have a generation of women who don't have any type of connection with their own womanhood. Womaning up looks like what we see on reality TV. Womaning up looks like the boss be or whatever whatever it is womaning up also can look like one woman upmanship i see i follow what the jones do i see that she has it or they have it and so i'm gonna try to do it better that happens a lot in business a lot of women are a lot more competitive than they are willing to say and you all know that men say that that, that we don't dress for them that we dress for other women <clears throat> because when women walk into the room, they say they say that we size up that woman. I think that that those are women who are disconnected to, from themselves. Because I know women who can who will see a woman come into the room, but we are all intuitive. That is something that that alchemical women do. They they will size, but it doesn't mean that the, it's a negative place. But it can be if you're stuck in a low vibrational place in your relationship with women but ultimately it's a relationship with yourself and so when we're talking about going into legacy and creating legacies around money you can leave pe people the material things but when they never have you when they've never had the emotional intelligence to navigate through this world then what because I, we can that you know <laughs> I, we talked about giving things. I'm, 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 I don't want to tell anybody's story too much, but there are just people who definitely we are privileged. Most of us, most of us have six either are six figure earners or 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 have six figure earning potential in this group. And so I know of of those of you who have told stories of being able to give your children the things and the sacrifices you made, even some of you not not to be in relationships so that you wouldn't expose your children to certain things. And so, yes, you did the noble cause. But what what is the new season of my of your life that is calling you to woman up beyond the obvious beyond survival mode beyond just keeping your marriage together what is the what are the what's the quality of the marriage that you want to have what is it beyond just um i need i need a man i want a man but what a, what what type what what what's the quality of the relationship that you want or do you just see what you think somebody else has What's the quality of the relationship? Because there is a part of womaning up that also looks like owning all parts of your darkness as well. A lot of times good girls only want to be light. And so in this case, I I didn't I didn't like really hitting the dog. I didn't like I didn't like too much hollering at the dog. I don't really like doing it with the boys. I don't really like I don't really like having to say I just I take that shit personal. Like damn, I gotta keep on telling you. I gotta keep on doing that. But yes, the answer is yes. And there's a part of 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 me that has to grow up to be able to pre to prepare them for something they cannot see. In unison with their father, in unison with their mother and their stepfather on the other side. We are a family and we need every one of these boys, for instance, aren't lacking anything when it comes to a community and a village. Yours, your children may have been the same, but there was a period where um, some of you, it may apply to some of you all. You didn't ask anybody for any parenting support and couldn't nobody tell you nothing because you were defensive about it. And 
baby. Ooh, these ones here. They are a new breed, but we birthed them. So woman, womaning up for me really was I had to get over the idea as an empath, right? That coming from um, a very sensitive constitution, um, that being firm did not mean I was being mean. Being firm did not mean that... Um, that I was not being loving. And one of the things the elder said, he said, it's only going to be for a little while. He said, you, he said, but you have to set the parameters for this dog. But people had told me the same thing when it came to the boys. Because when, when, their dad would leave the room and it was just us there. They would buck against me in a way that a daughter will charm her father. It's a diff it's a different dynamic. And so my so my when the boys I mean and he saw it and I didn't even see it. My husband could see how the boys was challenging me just because I was a woman because they were challenging their mother too. It was a continuum. They were challenging the teachers at school. And so don't be, but listen, I'm not just here to talk about parenting. I'm telling you the, the parenting lesson that allowed me to see, I was like, you know, spirit always has it in step for whatever it is that I'm teaching. Because when it comes to the legacy, it's never too early to start talking about the legacy of emotional intelligence as well as financial intelligence. Even for those of you who are entrepreneurs, a lot of, when you have an unhealed mother issue, you will compare yourself to every woman that's in business, ministry, or whatever. You will feel like you are inadequate because you will be searching for your definition of how you're supposed to be in business through every other woman or every other system or everybody else's testimony because you don't trust that, the form, that there is a formula inside of you that you have to access. The only real religion on the earth is man, woman, child, know thyself. That's the only real religion. And that is why many of us don't, we, we don't, we don't um, want to do that because we're spiritually lazy. So we rather follow the rules or somebody else's program rather than going deeper into undoing the program that you came here with. Because if it didn't work for you. If you you did it, come on now, y'all talk to me. How many of you had you 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 might not have got caught, but you did what you wanted to do with who you wanted to do it with and when you wanted to do it. And if you couldn't do it, you were sitting at home thinking about you can't wait till you get free enough to do it. And especially if you're a preacher's K kid, PK, if you if you came from a really strict environment, you know what I'm talking about. Those people who will who will just be wilding out out there and then because they was held so tight luckily I don't have that testimony totally I don't have that testimony of a mother who did, didn't allow in fact you know if you're from my hometown in here you'll know my, 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 my cousins was the local DJ so I was able to go out be VIP behind the scenes all it, arrive early stay late it, it, you know, so I kind of had, I, we had it good. So it, it was good and it wasn't so gr great because that means that anything we did in the town got back to our family. And see, we came, I came from a generation of, of a mama who was like, I bet not catch you out there in them streets doing this, this, and this. I bet not walk up on you. Come on now, I'm been country with y'all. If y'all so such a much and you can't deal with my little southern accent, I know how to speak English correctly. But my mama came from the school of I bet not come walk in that door and you and you letting a boy grind on you. I bet not find out that you was doing such and such, such and such. I bet not. And that meant 
that could mean anything. That could mean she would embarrass you if she caught you. First of all, if your mama walk in somewhere where you at the school dance or something like that. But a lot of these children don't have any type of fear in them. What do you do? What do you do? Because you don't want the, you don't want, even though, and here's, here's where you're dealing with two rather liberated parents who are awakened and conscious because we're co-parenting, our children are not homeschooled. So they have to navigate two worlds and, and, and go learn one system which is designed to program. I don't know how I'm on I said I'm not just talking about motherhood because I know y'all get stuck on concepts sometimes. You get stuck on the story. I, I'm talking about parenting lessons that pulled up out of me areas of my own growth and development uh, for the season in my life and sometimes you're in a new season in your life where you're being called to woman up beyond the obvious it, it, it can be really obvious that you want more money it could be really obvious that you need to lose weight it can be really obvious that you have a call on your life you need to answer it can be really obvious that your relationship is in trouble or needs to be spiced up but usually it is a, there is something deeper inside of the unconscious. Remember I talked about the superconscious, the conscious, and the unconscious. And so I know when I bring in, when women come to work with me, my, my, my guarantee, my program guarantee is I'll, I turn blind spots into breakthroughs because that's my gift. And I'm able to do it for myself. But let me say this, to a limited degree, somebody else said this. I don't know. I think we've been in such a season because then I was in spiritual ceremony where I had a whole nother experience that blew me away. But the, the what they what this what the wise elders said in ceremony is that most seers sometimes cannot see for their, themselves because they shouldn't have to. They're too they their life is dedicated to other people. And do you know how many years that I have spent? being upset sometimes with myself because I couldn't see what other people could see because and I believe that the that 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 the creator designed us like this because sometimes if we could see what what other, what if we could see in us sometimes what people an elder or whoever is the angel earth angel assigned to us if we could if we could see it we either would run or we would be so deadly and dangerous if our ego is not in check and so so that's why I know that a lot of the women who come in to work with me are called from a soul calling because you, you're you just getting in relationship to me so that I can help you to see. I, I, th that's, that's, that's my real job because your gifts are already inside of you. You already are blueprinted to do what you have been called to do, what you came on earth to do. But you cannot look at the blueprint of what it is that you want to do with the microphone. It, you cannot look at the blueprint of what how you want to be famous. You cannot look at the blueprint of, of how much money you want to make and not look at the blueprint that you came from and that is the womb the womb is the is, is a blueprint and not just the womb that you came from but what womb what womb did your mother come from because you were already programmed this is why the word says i knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb do anybody ever ask I what I we just say oh it's God God that sits high and looks low that knew you no 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 in other words you there is more to to all of us beyond the obvious and so when you come into this space when I'm talking to you about money even when I deal with gold and cryptocurrency um, you know, first of all, I don't go all the way into the deep concepts, and that's what this she magic is. Until when you, those of those who are in, who are uh, participating in the savings portion of the she magic versus the paid portion of the she magic, then you, some of you already have seen a transition because the first rule is pay yourself first. And, and check this out: many of us we don't we don't save. But you round here talking about you want to make five, ten thousand dollars a month. You need new clients. But you don't pay yourself first. You're out of integrity. Womaning up requires that you pay yourself first on an energetic level. So when I'm whenever and see, check this out. Check this out. I'm gonna tell you something else. 
I'm going to tell you something else that blessed me real good. Y'all ready? Blessed freed me up. But gave me my wings back. Got my juices flowing. Because for a minute, I was telling myself when it came to even business, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do. I need to do this. And I was trying to do everybody else's way. And, and then I, but I knew a friend of mine who I said, I talked about this about two, two lives ago. We partner, we do so, I, I, and you won't know because I have various partners. Some you know, some you don't know. And she said, she, she was telling me her formula. And I bring my, I bring my, my, the T people into She Magic for you to learn your formula. You come through rebirth and emerge transform for you to know your formula. I can't tell you your formula for your marriage, but I can tell you universal law and principles. I can show you rituals for you to be able to access parts of you that will allow you to access other things. But see, the truth of the matter is you got so many wholesale commercial people out here that abuse and sacred text sacred principles and making it commercial there are a lot of things that are supposed to be done in sacred ceremony only including how we how we take our children through rites of passage because how are you going to take your child through a rites of passage and you never been through one this is why i do the rites of passage process for the ladies hmm? talk to me <laughs> <laughs> I know it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> and so, so even in this season, even what season, uh, what what season are we in? And 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 I had to I had to give up for a moment. Everybody, you 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 around here thinking if I if I don't have any clients, if I'm I'm doing something wrong because the good girl tends to think I'm doing something wrong when life happens. When the good the good girl tends to think I I I I need to I got it I just want to get it right give me everything I'm supposed to do but sometimes you womaning up calls for a season of exploration how can you live life on your own terms if you believe in a have a fear based reality of God a fear based belief in God who did that come from. So you start there. And this is why with love, sex, and money, all you got to do is look at what you have ever believed about love, sex, and money, ladies. This is why I do the work that I do. Y'all with me? But if you don't trust God, the God of your understanding then you will not trust exploration because you will not feel safe. You think that there's going to be something punitive and that you will not get into some heaven. But man does not really believe in, in, in this heaven because all man does is focus on hell and creates more of it. Whatever I focus my attention on grows. That's universal law. I, that ain't Latanya. That ain't, that ain't First Calvary missionary Pentecostal Baptist Church that's universal law Jesus practiced universal law for those of you into Jesus but those of you into Muhammad universal law those of you who even talk about being an atheist universal law those of you who are pan-Africanists now, now now we you know now we're getting <laughs> but the ascended masters when we reference them it's not about the person and so a lot of times when we start talking about the things beyond the obvious, it requires a risk. It requires to risk to give up the habit of being yourself. Some of, you know, and look, if you are over 40, 45, you know your patterns. You know your patterns. And so if you don't know your patterns, that's okay. Being willing to know your, your patterns, being willing to, to look deeper is a part of the journey. And you will find that your sacred relationship becomes, becomes so beautiful and so sweet. And, so, and, and everything 
uh, your, is always speaking and ministering to you all around you. Even though I'm using these types of language, I'm not tied to any of it. I use this language a lot of times. I want to close with this analogy on womaning up. I want to close with, I, I started off with some, with three points and I got lost in the storytelling. So I'm going to close out with, 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 with some points. Cause this is the original thing the spirit said to me. I, my husband's so smart, right? I, I know I talk about him a lot, but we are, we really do work together. In fact, we're going to start doing some uh, lives together just stay tuned probably springtime we're getting it together so that we can just have some conversations about family and 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 what you know building the the family business if you will he said children don't grow grow down they grow up stay with that children don't grow down they grow up you once were a child Are, but when you start growing up, did you get stuck somewhere? And just look at when they come in, when a baby comes in, ideally you give them breast milk. Of course, this world puts their children on cow's milk and wonder why children act like animals. You're, you, there's a science of how you, you feed a species. And so you wouldn't feed a species milk from another species but we do okay so let's just deal with milk so we come in and we start getting milk and then ideally you you are you only are on milk until your digestive system is ready to start handling some baby food and so baby food now is produced for us once again spiritually lazy physically lazy because we we used to be able to have you know, the mothers who, who, who was raising their own food, they just mashed the food up. That was considered baby food. That's what I'm trying to say. And now people going back to it and calling it veganism, attachment, parenting, and all these fancy names. When the old women, they've been mashing up food that they grew in their garden and putting it in their baby's mouth. Okay, so the child goes from baby, from, 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 from milk to baby food. From baby food, they start going to solids. Some of you know that you won't give your children candy for for a long time. Now, I don't know about all of y'all. Some of y'all might like that junk food, but you know, you don't it takes a while before you generally give a, a baby candy. You know that it's gonna mess up their system. Then even before you before you introduce meat, there's a way you're really not supposed to be introducing meat. Once again, you not as a species you're not one species is not supposed to eat another species <laughs> but anyway for the meat eaters uh, and those who were raised on meat just like me basically even with that you would chew the chicken up give a little piece or you may let them suck on it okay it's the same way spiritually when it's time for us to woman up yes Many of us get stuck in our spiritual, emotional intelligence based off of a baby food consciousness. We have a baby food level of understanding of God. We have a baby food understanding of love. We have a baby food understanding of sex. We have a baby food understanding of money. And that is, and I don't mean the same. This is why the government treats us like wards of the state because we we willingly sign into the participation of a birth certificate, thinking that the government was doing something for us when they basically was was drawing down on our account. A certificate is a bond. A bond is something you use to cash in on. What's traded on Wall Street is our certificates of birth. In other words, you are you are born with a certain dollar amount in your account. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that? You were born with a certain value. But when you... Sign when your mother signed over the rights via a birth certificate, you basically now are saying 
that the state and this is why we begin to have to have license to do everything we we have need to have license to marry license to drive but all these things are optional don't y'all know that the Amish right in front of our face, they don't bring their children to nobody's hospital. They don't get the electricity from nobody. And they're, and, and, and what, why? And they're considered free and sovereign. But <laughs> uh, Dawn said you about to go deep. No, I'm not going deep because for some people, this is going to go right over their head. And I understand that. I'm only saying it. For those who, who, who know or want to know, because only because see, the thing is, those who are called, your consciousness gets pricked. Your consciousness gets pricked when it's for you. When you are still stuck on either breast milk, baby food, or you still learning how to digest food, it's scary to you. It's, and you don't hear it. You tune it out. It's not important to you. So, but you, in order to, to be able to access that level of sovereignty and freedom, you have to be able to do it in mind first. It must happen. That's where, why in Sundays we're dealing with the, the, the seven hermetic principles. And so the, that's why many of you, you, you're getting fed. You're on the journey. Because I know who I am. That's what I came here to do. And it may not look like uh, 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 this coach or that coach or, and, thi and, and this product and that product. Because whew, it doesn't have to. And neither does your marriage. Neither does your, your, your parenting or the way you parent even one child because there's there those children are not there just for you to master over they are there for you to access something inside of yourself to be able to communicate with them on another level and sometimes it's not always the way that your mother did it but sometimes it is see what i'm saying we can't get to be so such a much that we don't look at the the, the, the principles that are good for us because they all were principles. So I ask you sisters, what season of your life? I've been transparent. I've been sharing. I know it's a snow day. I, it, I've gone over about, I started right about at this time. So I'm right at one hour. I want to keep this short. But my question, one hour is short, right? But um, I do want to keep, keep, don't want to make it go any longer. I want you to think about what it is that, what season of your life are you being called to woman up? What season are you in terms of your she magic? If you're interested in participating in she magic and you're not already in the juicy process, there are two different processes, two different deliverables in terms of message, but they connect. Don't they connect for those of you who are in there? Doesn't Sunday connect? So if you don't have the money, you can't do anything. That's the story you're still telling yourself. That's the baby food you're still on. That's okay. Come get fed on Sunday. If you're ready to step up and woman up, then come, come into She Magic or come to private coaching or get an astrology reading with me. If you, if you, if you, okay, fine, you've done that and you, you do, you're experimenting, keep on experimenting, keep on exploring, keep on asking questions, stay with it, stay the course, it, it, help us another woman, bring another woman along with you, don't try to compete uh, with her or, or don't even judge her for where she is because you don't know, you may not know where you are and that's okay. The only in the in the United States do we make the mistakes that we've made along our journey something negative. And then there are those of you who are going into the rites of passage process. And this goes back to my philosophy. If you have not done work, work with me previously, there's a qualification process to be in the rites of passage. It is not available to anyone to walk off of the street. It's an application process or a referral process to be in the rites of passage. And so what I'm saying is you may be in the season. We are in the season. Now I said I was going to talk about the Mercury retrograde, but I'm thinking what I'm going to have to do is do another video, but know this. 
Mercury will be in retrograde to the middle of April, late April, really, because even when it comes out of retrograde, it will be, it doesn't go direct for another week. So Pis the Pisces, the new moon in Pisces that just happened, it's giving us a bit of a boost of energy. Before that, the way Pisces was positioned had everybody feeling lazy, lethargic, wanting to sleep, rest, reflect, emotional. Now it's starting its new energy. So you're still going to, it's it, the message of the new moon was more of follow your dreams, explore your dreams, listen to you. It's about dreams. So it is about resting and reflection. All Mercury grades are an opportunity to reflect. So going into Easter, we're going to be in retrograde. This is the woman's fertile season. This is the woman's season to, to, to begin to either sow to begin to sow or begin to pounce into action. Some of you who started working with me, you get, you're gearing up to get ready to work towards some vision. Um, some of you are getting ready to plant some, some seeds in this fertile ground, get pregnant, rebirth and emerge, transform, rebirth and emerge, transform. Some of you are, are in another season. Some of you are in juicy you two, three times, or you are doing the rites of passage process again, because already your season has shifted shifted. We're in a quantum year. And so um, we're in a quantum time period where your breakthroughs are going to be quantum. And so your season, your awareness that there's a new season is also going to be quantum, but it's only, it's not going to happen by osmosis. It does require you to woman up, pleasure up and turn up, but turn up doesn't always look like doing. Turning up can also mean rise up, rise up to the place that you are being called to, that somebody prayed for you to be the one, for you to interrupt the pattern and the pathologies in your family. So I hope that this has been um, worth your time sharing these uh, 60 minutes or so with me today. Uh, I enjoy sharing with you. I'll keep you all posted um, on the dog we're good with the with the boys <laughs> but i'll keep you all posted but i'm womaning up are you i love you and there's nothing you can do about it all right now i'll see you on the other side